Hi, I'm Millie. I'm the editor-in-chief of Cosmo Middle East, and you're watching the Digital Games Conference. Today, I'm joined by Annabelle Bristow, the marketing director of Boss Bunny Games, and we are going to be talking all about careers and success stories in the gaming industry. Hello. Hello, Millie. <laughs> How are you? I'm very good. How are you? I'm good. Excellent. So before we crack on and I ask you all the questions that I want to know about getting a career in the gaming industry, can you tell me a little bit more about your very storied career in the gaming industry? You've worked with some of the biggest names and the biggest brands, and also a little bit about Boss Bunny. Okay, so I will start with Boss Bunny first, because uh, that's what I'm here to talk about. Um, Boss Bunny Games is a developer and publisher of both hyper-casual and mid-core mobile games. And we're based here in the UAE. So everybody in the office is very passionate about gaming. We're very passionate about the industry. It's woven into the fabric of Boss Bunny. Um, and we not only develop games for our own IP, so to create our own IP, but we also work with local partners. So we've just done um, a multi-game deal with Freej, which is Lamtara Art Studios, and also with Fade Fit to create a game based on his snacks. Um, Myself, I've been in gaming 18 years. I had to work it out this morning just to be sure because I think I got it wrong last time. Um, but I started out at THQ in the UK in London um, and I worked on gaming brands such as Disney, Pixar, uh, Warhammer, WWE, Nickelodeon, Warner Brothers. It was fabulous. And then moved to Capcom. So I started working on Street Fighter and of course Resident Evil. Um, and then I was very lucky to move to Dubai. So here with uh, a company called Red, and I was publisher manager for EA. So I was really lucky to work on FIFA, Star Wars Battlefront, Need for Speed, um, Battlefield. So with those jobs, I was able to live um, in London and then Australia and then here. So I'm never, there's never a day that I'm not grateful for my job and where it's taken me. It's been brilliant. And obviously the gaming industry is becoming a huge phenomenon, but there's still a huge misconception around it. And I think, especially for young people and Cosmo readers who are really into gaming, a lot of the time people don't see how it can actually be a viable career option, but there must be so many different careers that you can go into under the gaming umbrella. Oh, Millie, listen, it's, it's vast. The, the opportunity for anybody to get into gaming um, dependent on which role they want to do is huge. So what I would say is mm, find your passion first. So do you want to do game development? Do you want to be a coder? Do you want to be a designer? Do you want to work in art and creative design, even music composure? Um, you could do ad monetization. You could do game analytics, social and community management. Um, there's such a varied role. What I'd say to anybody looking to get into games is work out what fires you up and then go and find the companies, go to the universities and speak to them. And listen, Millie, Boss Bunny is really open to anybody with internships or requiring internships in the region to come to us, talk to us, even if they want career advice in gaming, get in touch with us at careers at bossbunny.com. I love that. Well, we are obviously all about careers at Cosmo. So that's a great little tip. Yes. Um, Do you want to come into gaming, Millie? I mean, if you're offering, do it. I think I'd be quite good. <laughs> I'm really good at um, Fruit Ninja. Okay. It's not Street <laughs> Fighter, but we'll work with it. Okay. Yeah. Or SpongeBob. Um, you're obviously in the marketing department. So what does a kind of typical day in the life of a gaming marketeer look like? Busy. <laughs> Very busy. Um, so I'll talk about my role and what I do because it's probably easier than a day in the life because it all encapsulates within that. Um, I cast the net for players to come into the funnel. So it's down to me to find those players and get them in the game. Um, I'd say 70% of my role is digital marketing. So that's finding um, which is the right ad platform to target the players. And I target those players with creative campaigns um, to bring them into the game. Now, every game and every player is very different. So you have to be able to move really swiftly and quickly to change a campaign within a day or a few hours if you see it's not working. Um, marketing in gaming, and I'd say with any industry, especially mobile gaming, it's an obligation, it's not even an option. You have to do it, you cannot get the game as if not. Um, and as part of that day-to-day -day work, I work with uh, Naomi, also known as Nono, in the office. She's our Chief Information Officer. 
um, and she's also head of ad monetization. So what that means is we check to see, are the ads appearing in the game correctly? Are they annoying gamers? Um, Naomi's expertise, she's actually ex-Disney and game loft, so she's, she's very experienced. And we work together to map out the player's journey A to Z. So when does the player install the game? What level is he playing? What level does he come out of the game? Which characters are most people playing? Can we then work with a social and community manager to start doing memes of those characters? Is there something we're doing wrong where people are uninstalling in the game? So from A to Z, your, your player experience, everything is monitored. And we want to keep that experience really enjoyable so we bring them back in the game time and time again. It's a big journey and it's a big day and it's long, but great. <laughs> I think the thing that we have that's really similar is working in that digital space, especially with gaming. People are doing it 24-7. You yeah. can't really switch off. It's Listen, gaming's it's considered an extra leisure time. So if you're playing on console, for instance, um, that's a community-based game. Yes, you can do solo play, but when you've got your Fortnites and your PUBGs or if you've got your Call of Duties or your FIFAs, even your League of Legends, you're, you're talking to a base of people who are living and breathing that community. Um, and with mobile gaming... Um, which are, you know, it's, it's over 50% of global gaming revenues, mobile gaming alone. Wow. There's a lot of people who are spending time on their phone. They want two minutes, anywhere between two minutes and 20 minutes to just escape. So an extra leisure time, yeah, it's definitely considered. And I think it should be embraced. Um, and I really want to make this point as well. That something that people don't really consider is that these communities of people, sometimes there are people out there that struggle to find friends or communicate to a group of people they feel left out. And gaming gives them the advantage of being part of a community mm -hmm. that they feel safe in and they can play their game. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty special. Is there a higher percentage of mobile gamers in the MENA region than the rest of the world? Not in the MENA region specifically, um, but the growth of the MENA region is 20, it's growing 25% percent faster than the rest of the world I believe wow yeah it's it's really big listen the the stats for global mobile games in 2021 is expected to be a hundred billion dollars and like I said earlier uh, mobile gaming alone is over 50 percent of that stat so in the MENA region specifically I believe in 2022 I mean these are approximate guests this is not an Annabelle categorically these are these revenues but they're expected to be 2.3 billion and let's not forget the rollout of 5G. You have to consider that. So gamers are getting instant gratification very, very quickly. Their, their need for new content and to play games is happening at a drop of a hat. It's the same with their need for new content on social media as well. Yeah. I feel that. It's a way of life. Yeah. Yeah. And such a huge percentage of that number are Gen Z and millennials as well, which is why at Cosmo we're really interested in the gaming market because that's where our audience is. Well, it does. Millie, listen, there's, there's a, weirdly enough, there's a bigger audience than that though. It's not just the Gen Z and millennials. So for instance, on a re recent title we did, the analytics will show us that actually the people that are playing our games are 18 to 35. So you've got your catchment in there, but there's a higher percentage mm -hmm. of people at an older age that are finding fun and having time out on their phone. And listen, on, on one particular analytical piece that we did, um, there's people, as in fact, males over 44, mm -hmm. that are loving playing our hyper casual games. Camel Dash in particular, I'm not name dropping, but Camel Dash in particular, a game we bought out recently, has, has really shown us that the older generation is time out. It's a getaway. I love that. And um, yeah, it's definitely a stat that I don't think people are aware of. No. So how does one get into the gaming industry, especially if you went in 18 years ago? Did you ever think that it would boom as much as it has and will continue to do? No, and I was never even a gamer. So we had this conversation before many moons ago. Uh, Your favourite game is? Oh, SpongeBob SquarePants, back up <laughs> for Bikini Bottom. <laughs> Um, but Street Fighter at heart. Okay. Okay. Cause I just want to get angry and play, you know? Yeah. Um, but my passion was always music. And then I, by fluke, got into gaming with an interview I had and I went to the office and I never wanted to turn back. And there was, there was never a moment at school where I said, Oh yeah, I want to, 
I want to be in entertainment and gaming. Gaming is the biggest entertainment sector in the world. It's bigger than music and movies combined. And for kids nowadays, or even people that are older to have the opportunity to get into it and say, look, here is a career option for you is amazing. So you can look at universities, colleges, um, all publishers have internships available for anybody that wants to go in. Like I said before, find your passion. What, what ignites you? What, what gets you going? Do you like marketing? I was always sales at THQ, but then I did brand and then I did marketing and thought, do you know what? This is the fun side of gaming. This is creative. I'm finding a game. I'm going to put them in our game. I want to make them love it. Um, so there's those options, but. Um, at Boss Bunny, we are so keen on building a local ecosystem. So that's having game development talent here in the region that we can have a pool of people making our games. Um, and there'll be other, there'll be other companies coming here that, you know, as soon as more people come here, there'll be a bigger pool of people. But Boss Bunny firmly want to create that eco, uh, system of people to come in and work in the industry. So get in contact with us. We're happy to speak to everybody. And where do you see the future of the gaming industry in the next five years and the next 10 years in terms of the content that we're going to see, the games that's going to come out, mm. and also the new roles that are going to have to be created to support what comes out? Yeah. Okay. So I've, I, there's so much going on now anyway. I think mm. digital so fast. Um, for mobile gaming, it would just keep rolling. There'll be faster networks. There'll be uh, a better variety of games for people to play online. So, for instance, if you if you take, for instance, the Fall Guys recently, you know, the mass community of people suddenly playing this game. And I believe the same thing will happen in mobile. If you look at our friends um, at Sony and Microsoft, so both PS5 and Xbox Series X, uh, the hardware is completely digital download, or you can still get you know, hardware where you want to put a physical copy in, but the option to have a digital only machine is, is an example of where it's heading. We're on that freight train already. Um, augmented reality. I think that will, that will shine. Um, it's already available now, but it's quite clunky. It's, it's quite big for people to use. It's not a great, you know, player experience. Um, I think that will change though. I think headsets will change definitely. And listen, those, those kind of aspects of the industry, well, the jobs are already there. They will just become more dynamic and more immersive. I think the one thing for me that's stand out is development um, will be better because it'll have to be. The quality will be better. Um, but that goes with the natural, you know, growth of, of gaming anyway. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that's a standout role for me is analytical roles because everything you're doing is online. And unless you can read data, and I'm not saying, you know, look at numbers on a spreadsheet and we've got that many players, you have to read data to look at a story of a player experience. Mm -hmm. And for me, if you haven't got top class analytical people in your company, it's, it's just non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. So I think from a digital perspective, yes, the gaming will be far more advanced and high tech and development studios will be, you know, up in the echelons, but it's about reading data and knowing how to make that experience great, good, bring them back. Mm. Yeah. And finally, I wanted to ask about the role of the gaming influencer. So the rise of influencers in the last 10 years has been metamorphic, but what the rise of the gaming influencer as well seems to really become a thing. I think a lot of celebrities are starting to dabble in the gaming industry as well. Um, the, you know, like Travis Scott does mm. digital performances in the middle of tournaments and things like that. Do you think we're going to continue to see more of that as well? Yes, 100%. I mean, you know, you've got artists as well, digital artists like Marshmallow yeah. getting involved um, with gaming. And I think it will do nothing but continue because that is the format of the next generation. Mm. I think people you know, listen, gaming's always, it's always been there, but it's like people are waking up and going, oh, actually, mm. um, I think it's really simple. It's such a mass market audience that it's very easy to have synergy with anyone that's playing. So a certain music genre or a celebrity. Um, I think ultimately for the game, it comes down to if people like that game or not. Mm. Um, whether the celebrity endorses or, or, you know, you view or whatever, they're, they're always going to have high penetration views, but does the person keep staying in the game and playing? You might have, a, a you know, 10 million people 
hitting a view and watching it, but are they downloading the game and continuing the game life cycle? Mm -hmm. So I think they'll definitely always be there. It's just part of the natural growth of gaming. Um, I think gamers, listen, they tend to make their own mind up about what games they want. Mm -hmm. Yes, they can be influenced by celebrity, but if you're a gamer, you know what you like. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's, it's sprinkling on top, mm -hmm. you know? Um, we'll see. We'll see. I think, I think people are savvy. They know what they like and what they want to play with gaming. Yeah. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing what happens and where it goes because it's just changing every day. Every day. But yeah. that's the industry since the start. Since, you know, I think I started when it was PS3 and it has changed phenomenally. Um, you know, I was in console gaming and now I'm in mobile gaming mm. and I love console gaming. It's my, it's my blood. Mm. But now I've moved into mobile gaming, especially with Boss Bunny, which I'm so fortunate to be a part of. Um, I feel really lucky to see a very, very rounded approach of the industry and where we're heading. Mm. Super lucky. And Boss Bunny is a great company. I love the name as well. It's pretty good. Cute name. You can thank my bosses for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you for having me, Millie. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see more, then follow us on Instagram at Cosmo Middle East. And if you want to know more about the Boss Bunny story um, and inside the company and get in touch with us about internships, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter at Boss Bunny Games. Ladies and gentlemen, that was an eye opener, don't you think so? How to be a professional and to create your own career in the gaming world. Now, beautifully enough, a lot of people went to the gaming world and actually became a success story all taking place right here on DGZ. Brought to you by Neom. So, more stories and a successful one in the gaming world coming up next. Game on. Let's go.